Hi, my name is EJ Massa. Have you ever created an in-depth and labor-intensive review series about a television phenomenon for weeks, all the while having a toddler and a super busy job? Hey, me too. Please watch mine. Whenever I finish a huge project like that, I want to make a celebratory brisket. Here's my celebration brisket. It's just a four pound brisket flat that I dry brined overnight in the fridge. Now I know what you're thinking. EJ Massa, you shell of a man. How come you didn't cook a whole packer brisket? Well, I could have asked my butcher to prepare me one, but this was lying on the shelf and it was the perfect size for me and my family. I didn't want to have all that extra meat around. And also I'd have to actually talk to the butcher and who wants to have real human interactions? Not me. It's like if you want to order a pizza and you went on the pizza place's website and they only had a phone number to call that you couldn't order pizza right on the website. I guess I'm never eating pizza ever again. This brisket will need a binder since it's dry from the overnight brine. So I sprinkled some Worcestershire sauce on it. I said it right, right? Worcestershire, Worcestershire? Ah, f You can use anything, oil, water. Honestly, it doesn't add all that much flavor. Then I sprinkled on some of Meathead's Big Bad Beef Rub on there. And these are the ingredients for that. There we go. Both sides are rubbed up. Rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Thanks for the brisket. <laughs> there was some butcher's twine on there from the butcher shop. I'm just going to leave it on there because I don't think it'll hurt anything. I'm going to try something new today. I picked up this Kingsford long burning charcoal from Big Y. It was on sale along with regular bags of Kingsford and they were $3 each. So I cleaned them out. So that should last me a whole summer of YouTube videos. Wink. I dumped the whole bag into my Weber Summit and let the Snapjet starter go at it for seven minutes. Add some oak wood chunks in there along with a deflector plate covered in foil so it doesn't get all messy and I let it come up to temperature. When it approached around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, I closed down the top vents one fourth open and the bottom vent to the smoke setting. Once the temperature got to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, I added on the beautiful brisket. Of course, adding a probe to monitor the temperature. It's been a few weeks since I used my summit. I've been concentrating on these Game of Thrones reviews and also I've been using my Red Weber kettle because it's pretty and it's light so I can carry it to like other people's parties and cook food. So I haven't used the summit. So I forgot just how much of a joy it is to use. So easy to set up and smoke and maintain those temperatures. I have to say, it's great to get back in the barbecue saddle with you all. I'll put on my barbecue hat and my barbecue boots. I'm Sheriff EJ Massa and I'm gonna clean up this town. You know what the best disinfectant is? Smoke. This delicious smoke right here. Yeehaw! After about three hours into the cook, the meat got to around 160 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature, and with that came the stall. So I wrapped it in two layers of heavy duty foil with a little bit of beef broth. Wrapped it up nice and tight, put it back on the pit and placed the probe back in. Roughly two hours later, for a total cook time of five hours, the internal temp was around 204 degrees Fahrenheit and I probe tested the meat for tenderness and I was supremely satisfied. I let it rest just in the foil for about 45 minutes. I'll let the brisket rest because I'll never rest. I can't. I can't sleep. Because of all the things I've done. Originally, I was going to see how long this bag of charcoal was going to last on the summit. But to my surprise, maybe just like a fourth of it was consumed. So instead, I'll save it for another cook. I'm poor. I can't just be wasting charcoal. I was pretty pleased at the performance of this charcoal. I don't know if it was exactly 25% longer burn than regular Kingsford Blue, but it did seem a little more efficient. Now for the moment of truth. Cut this guy open and have a taste. Oh, it looks so good. A little smoke ring, glistening with juice, and it pulls apart perfectly. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, mm, so tender. Smoky. Mmm. Perfect. Perfect. Definitely peppery. Got a little bit of that heat from the cayenne. Oh, it's good. This is 
I don't think I'd do it any other way. This is, if I was gonna make brisket flat, this is the way I would do it. I, again, I love the Weber Summit charcoal. It's so fun to use. It, it almost feels like it's cheating. Now to celebrate making a video about making brisket by making a brisket and filming it for YouTube. Lots of great content coming to you this summer. I, I was sent another cheap grill to review, so you're gonna see that soon. It looks like a briefcase. Oh my God. Hopefully it won't be a disaster like last time. Or hopefully it will be, because it's funnier. Until next time, bye.